Hi, this is your Sublim Bharti and welcome to T3M. Our topic of this month, the topic of this month is infrastructure as code. And today we have with us Shai Bear, COO and co-founder of Wing Cloud. Shai, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, uh, great to be here. Since the topic is infrastructure as code, I would like to hear from you, how do you see infrastructure as code? How would you define it? To me, infrastructure as code is basically way to organize all the infrastructure in uh, something that's uh, using tools that we use uh, to to develop code. So instead of uh, doing uh, click ops and defining everything in, uh, in in the portals of the cloud providers, we use uh, files uh, with written code. It could be code, it could be uh, um, like uh, configuration definitions, but uh, using tools that we use in order to uh, to write and to deploy and to make changes to uh, to code, basically. What does it mean for uh, developers and DevOps in, when we look at you know infrastructure code? When you like everything is seen as code, what does it mean for them? How it makes their life easier or difficult? <laughs> uh, so I think depending on the tool, of course, th- there is a very wide variation between the different tools. But I think that primarily um, allowing uh, DevOps engineers and sometimes even developers the ability to uh, to reproduce uh, the, the infrastructure definitions, uh, be able to uh, to take uh, infrastructure definitions and uh, and compose compose them into different uh, different uh, definitions and uh, uh, reuse some of the uh, code that uh, they've already created in order to spawn new um, new uh, environments or to modify existing environments without having to to re- to redo everything with uh, uh, clicks basically how much adoption are you seeing of infrastructure as code we're biased of course we, we are uh, primarily talking with uh, companies that uh, are using infrastructure as code uh, in, in various forms so I don't really know, uh, I don't really have uh, numbers how prevalent it is, but I think uh, almost any company, any serious company that's on the cloud today uses uh, some form of, of infrastructure as code. And I just said, you know, that you're a bit biased because, you know, you deal with companies who are deploying infrastructure as code. Uh, and uh, can you talk a bit about um, when they do embrace uh, these practices in go tools. Uh, what are some of the hurdles, roadblocks that they come across? Because sometimes when we do talk about these technologies, we also talk about the people or cultural aspect of it. So, so, so talk about you know what challenges they face. Of course, we'll also talk about that and how you folks help them, uh, and we'll also talk about the open source uh, project as well. But I do want to understand the uh, the hurdles, the challenges they face, and how much, how many of these challenges are, are about technologies, tools, and how much of it is about culture. Uh, excellent question. So uh, I'll start with the, with the culture. I think one of the main hurdles is that many companies divide the uh, inf- like developers who uh, handle infrastructure. Namely, DevOps are different people from developers who handle the business logic of the application. And I think that uh, especially today with modern cloud, there is a big mix. uh, Like you can't really divide uh, the application into infra and and, and, uh, applicative code. Uh, What you might call infra also has applicative uh, parts to it. For example, if you have uh, storage bucket in the cloud. Um, applicatively, it's a way to store objects, right? And, and that's uh, something that the application developers are uh, are using. But if you look at the infrastructure part, you need to set it up. You need to define uh, uh, redundancy policies and, and uh, security policies, and and uh, uh, and so you can't really say, okay, this uh, part, this bucket is only infrastructure or only uh, application. And when you have different uh, developers handling these different aspects, they find themselves oftentimes having to depend on each other and and, uh, and uh, having to work very closely together. And obviously that can create friction and, uh, and problems. Uh, so that was a very 
long way of saying that uh, people, uh, uh, there is no good separation between uh, concerns of the application developers and, uh, and, and the DevOps uh, team. And I think uh, techno uh, technology-wise, uh, it manifests it itself in the fact that, um, like I said before, you have, it's very hard to say that uh, specific, specific service is just infra or just uh, part of the application. And, and these tools, uh, infrastructure as code, only handle uh, the, the infrastructure part, and they don't let you also handle the, the applicative part. So it forces you to kind of separate your application into two different parts and that you then need to stitch manually together, um, which is a lot of like a lot of boilerplate code and uh, and, and glue logic that uh, no one likes. Can you talk about some of the key? Uh Constituents is not a word, but some of the key components. By components, I do I don't mean the code base, but these are the key things that organizations, teams should look at when they're embracing infrastructure as code. So I think they primarily should look at, uh, at their developers and and see what they they know. Because uh, I think that because of of, uh, of this uh, separation, if you uh, and, and friction between. Uh, DevOps teams and, and developer teams. If you can have a team that uh, is full stack in the sense that every developer uh, is their own DevOps, uh, I think in today's world with today's technologies, uh, this is something that uh, that would be beneficial. So if you can get uh, your team to be uh, to be full stack in that way, that uh, that is something that uh, you should uh, you should look into. As well as to try and understand exactly what uh, what needs you have of the cloud. For example, if you are uh, if you need to have a multi-cloud setup, uh, you have very different needs uh, versus if you uh, only need to be in, in one cloud. And uh, the same goes for if you're a multi-tenant, uh, single-tenant. So there are a lot of different uh, architectural aspects of of, uh, of individual solutions that then dictate which tools and which philosophies you should follow. What kind of trends you are seeing in this space where you look at infrastructure, you look at code, and you say, hey, these are things that are happening. This is where we are heading. Uh, so I think that the, the trend that, uh, that that we see is that the, these uh, infrastructure as code tools are becoming more and more like uh, actual code. Like uh, uh, it used to be uh, more configuration files and now the more modern solutions are actual code in, in uh, modern programming languages. And uh, they started with just uh, taking care of infrastructure and now you see that uh, slowly but surely uh, tools are starting to also uh, handle the, the applicative uh, part of the, of the application and the connection between the application and, uh, and the infrastructure. So th there's this trend now of infrastructure from code, uh, different solutions that allow developers to, uh, to write their applicative code and then uh, have some system platform or compiler that uh, uh, deduces the, the infrastructure that is needed in order to, to run that code. And uh, I think that uh, th this is a very interesting uh, approach. I think that uh, it's very well suited for um, let's say uh, very specific, uh, very specific solutions, very, very specific uh, needs, uh, vertical needs, um, and on the other hand, there is um, th there are other solutions that are more general purpose, uh, where uh, th they try to maybe hide the infrastructure altogether, uh, like. Uh, uh, we're using uh, generative AI, where you just uh, uh, define your uh, your desired uh, application or your desired infrastructure, and then uh, these tools generate the infrastructure that uh, that is needed. And then uh, there is uh, tools like Winglang, what what we're uh, what we're making that we're basically creating a general purpose programming language um, that. Uh, that allow you to uh, allows you to to express your infrastructure and and your code. We're not trying to hide 
the fact that there is infrastructure and uh, we, we believe that uh, developers do need to understand that, that, they're, that they're writing code for a distributed system and to, uh, to, to write their code accordingly. We just believe that they can write this code for an abstract notion of a cloud, much like uh, POSIX has done for a, for a single machine. Uh, so basically do the same for, uh, for the cloud. Yeah, since you talk about generative AI, so when we look at LLMs, uh, does it kind of help in Fletcher's code or it kind of hurt teams? Good question. I, I don't think that, like, I think most developers today use LLMs to some extent while they're, they're developing, but I haven't seen a, a solution in production yet where we just say, I want to create uh, this and that application and it will create the perfect uh, uh, code for it or even just the infrastructure part that is scalable and secure. Um, there are solutions where you, you don't define the business need, but you define the... Uh, the architecture, the infrastructure. Uh, and again, I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see where, uh, uh, how fast uh, these uh, solutions will evolve. But currently, I haven't seen a production-ready solution. Let's say. Can you talk about what kind of tools are available for, you know, of course, uh, customers, users, so they can, once again, uh, leverage some of these technologies and practices? There are so many tools, and I think that's part of the problem, that uh, there are too many tools to choose from. And, and uh, uh, But I think, obviously, uh, the more, uh, some of the tools that I know more are uh, Pulumi and uh, Terraform, obviously. And uh, you have... Uh, um, other more specialized tools that, that uh, help in, in more uh, distinct uh, use cases, but uh, but yeah, that's part of the part of the problem. So, how are customers able to navigate uh, through? Uh, you know, as you said, this is a. I mean, when you look at the whole cloud native Kubernetes space, it is uh, intimidating. There are so many, which is actually good. It's a healthy ecosystem, but you know, it can be. Intimidating for 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 users, customers. So, how is Wing Cloud? And of course, if you look at open source projects, you know, uh, Wing Lang is there. How are you folks helping customers? So, we're helping them mainly through the connection, this connection between the infrastructure part and the the applicative uh, part. So, we allow developers to have a single code base uh, with a single programming model where you. Uh, write both your infrastructure and your uh, your applicative code. And then uh, you can compile it to different uh, provisioning engines, or different platforms, basically. So you can uh, work at a higher level of abstraction and then uh, decide later uh, which cloud providers, which provisioning engines, and, and uh, which uh, security and other policies you want to, you want to enforce. So developers don't really need to uh, make these decisions or don't need, really need to know all those different tools. And uh, the, the operation people, they are the ones who are going to work with the, uh, not actually setting up these tools, but uh, they're going to configure them, let's say. What advice do you have for teams um, uh, when they are embracing infrastructure code? Um, what is the right approach they should have there? I would just uh, advise them to, to take a very close look at their business needs, um, not just the immediate business needs, but also the projected business needs and, uh, and, and look at, uh, at, their, uh, at their technology stack and try to, to choose the, the right tools for, for the job, basically. As you said, there's a healthy ecosystem today with tools that are... Uh, Basically, they're uh, specialized for any any use case almost. So just uh, educate yourself on uh, on the available tools after you really understand the, the problem that you solve and, and pick the right tools. Shai, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Great. Thank you. It was uh, my pleasure. <laughs>